Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King Steve Arias here. We have got another exciting episode, and in this one, we are going into the new Battlefield 5? Or is it Battlefield 1? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the new reveal of the next Battlefield game was yesterday during a live stream. I rewatched it, took a ton of notes down, um, and so we're going to go through this. So, first of all, we had a name, guy by the name of Lars Gusterson, I think. Uh, they're from Swe they're from Sweden, so yeah, I'm sorry if I mis mispronounced your name. Um, he now, I dude, first of all, I got to give this guy props because first of all, he's been with Dice since 1999. Okay, that is the equivalent of 17 years. He's worked with Dice for 17 years. How awesome is that? Um, now, in case you guys don't know, typically you don't stay with the company that long, regardless of what you're in, uh, let alone video gaming. I mean, you're constantly switching developers and, and getting the best of the best and newer guys, but this guy's been with them forever, so I give this dude massive props, massive props for being with them for that long. Anyways, back to this. Uh, so... Something that I was watching, and at the very beginning, they went through, like, the whole era of Battlefield, kind of giving a brief overview of what Battlefield was, like, all the way from 19, uh, the Battlefield 1943. But it was really weird, because if I would have watched this to begin with, uh, they kept bringing up the point of 1943 over and over again. It seemed like they were repeating themselves with it. And, and as I was watching this, I'm like, I know that this new Battlefield, what this new Battlefield is... But that being said, uh, they hinted at this a lot, a lot, a lot. If you watch the live stream, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I will also have the live stream down below along with two other videos, which I'll mention uh, later on. Um, so uh, there's the live stream, and then we get to uh, we get to the actual reveal. And Patrick sold to them. I don't, I don't exact, I don't exactly know, but he came out and he kind of talked about his thing, and then they released the trailer and the trailer play by play. Now I could go over the trailer myself and I could give you feedback, but the thing of it is, people have done it much better. So the the other two videos down below are, I'm gonna link are um, Level Cap, which is an excellent gamer. He did he posted an excellent video, what I thought, um, and if you want even more depth into the trailer, I will link that in the description below. And Matimio as well. Uh, they did. I watched both of their videos. They had really good play-by-plays of the trailer, and um, I think they did a really good job dissecting it. I didn't really want to take anything from them, so I'm not going to say anything because they, they basically said everything I need to know. So if you want to see more on the trailer, go ahead and watch their videos. It will be phenomenal. So back to the back to the news. Then they had a discussion board after talking about all this. So number one, rule number one is this: this game will be set in World War One. That is right, a World War One game, and people are going nuts over this. We've been asking for another first-person World War One or World War Two game for. Ever now, whether it was Call of Duty, um, uh, Battlefield, you know, any first-person shooter, really, everyone's been asking for it, and now they've finally done it. Now, it's interesting that they went with World War One because World War One is a very... The war was very trench warfare heavy, and Matimio pointed this out, um, it, or he's pointed this out a couple times, is that World War One is a very trench heavy, and... That being said, I don't know how much enjoyment uh, they would, you know, you would actually get out of it. But the trailer showed so much more, and so people are really happy about this. Um, so, anyways, getting back to that, there will be hair combat. It sounds like there will be air combat. They mentioned air combat. They mentioned horse charges. So. You'll be able to ride horses. Oh yes, this has been confirmed. You can ride horses, and you will be able to attack on the horses as well. And it sounds like they're 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 doing very close quarter combat things. Like there's going to be very heavy emphasis on close quarter combat, which I am a massive fan of. Um, with with all of these guys that were up talking, one of them's name was Westy, and he's like he's like a game tester type thing. I forget they like game changers or something like that world game changers or something like that and he was like a beta tester for these guys and basically what he told what he said is that it's got a gritty feel to it and you can see that from the trailer right off the bat you see a dude club a dude in the face and i'm thinking i mean i'm sitting there i'm like dude that is gritty that that's it's got a darker feel than the other battlefields have had in their other games 
Um, and something else that was kind of worrisome uh, to people is World War One didn't seem to have very many varieties in in like the landscaping or the maps. Well, I'll assure you this much: there is a lot more than just one trench in the middle of the battlefield i'll tell you what man they showed all kinds of stuff they said that there will be settings from all over the world uh they they had one from the alps of italy and or alps of france or something like that and they showed all kinds of gameplay if you want to see more on that go ahead and uh look at that trailer um apparently the vehicles in this game they've made the biggest vehicles they've ever made in any other game prior to this apparently the the vehicles are going to be massive and so i'm thinking like a blimp they showed a blimp at the very end i'm thinking that's probably what they're more getting at i'm not 100 percent sure what they mean by bigger vehicles maybe they're the, well the battleship as well there's a massive battleship apparently and that's supposed to be one of the biggest vehicles they've i mean i'm thinking as well um so there are those two things I talked about that. Um, they talked about the balance a little bit, how there's going to be a rock, paper, scissors balance, and that's how they've always done things. Um, by that, he means that even if you get something that's really heavy, um, like you're, like he talked about the battleship specifically and how, yes, you'll be able to rain down um, and like destroy people with it. But with that being said, you put a giant target on your back, you're really slow and you'll be like very vulnerable to being destroyed. So there are, there is that thing, uh, the rock, paper, scissors that he talked about balance a little bit there. Um, he talked about choices as well. Um, he, now, this is something that I was kind of thinking about myself, is if it's in World War One, I, I was thinking about the classes, and I was thinking, you know, do, do, are there will there be classes? Because there wasn't really classes back then. I'm thinking more of a real, more realistic type feel to it. But would there really be classes in this element? Now, they mentioned classes, and I'm assuming there will be classes because it is a Battlefield game. You know, that doesn't... I mean, you can't really have Battlefield without classes. That's a staple point in the franchise. So I don't think that we'll see the classes gone. But I'm wondering, how are they going to implement these classes? Uh, will there be an engineer-type dude that takes out large things? I, You know, it, I just don't know. I, I think it'll be interesting to see how they do the classes overall. Weapons. It sounds like there will be a lot of weapons. Uh, shotguns. They mentioned just, like, literally everything they mentioned shotguns um some machine guns like machine guns sniper rifles um uh assault rifles they literally mentioned like every gun available and it's still kind of i i i know that they said this like there probably will be there probably will be guns of every um there will be guns of every type like that but how many will we see I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I know they're going to take... They're literally going to put every gun that they can find. But there's not a lot of guns from this era, I don't think. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But from what I've seen from World War One, there's really not a ton of guns to pull from. I mean, they used the same LMG in the... in the uh, Level Cap pointed this out. They used the same LMG from the uh, airplane out in the front lines and so that makes me wonder i'm like really do you have another lmg are there other lmgs um so i don't know i don't know these are just my thoughts on the overall thing um i really hope there's a lot of weapons and i think there will be um overall something else that comes into comes to mind i don't know if i was going to talk about this later or not but someone asked about um uh weapon customization and he said that there's going to be a unique way of customizing your guns or weapons. I don't know what that means. I wish I could. I wish I could tell you what that means. I don't know. I I, I, I don't. I'm rather confused myself about what you mean by unique customization. So to me, what it sounds like is they're going about customizing the weapon a different way than they have in the past. And I don't know how you would customize a weapon other ways i don't know what that means i'm a little confused by that like i said i really don't know what he means by that i wish i could tell you i have i have i have honestly i have no no idea what that means so anyways 
getting back to this, you will be melee weapons and there will be bayonets as well. And apparently different melee weapons will have different attributes to them. So one might be faster, one might do more damage. So we might see uh, melee weapons take more than one hit. Um, I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know what that's going to look like. We'll have to wait and see. That's pretty interesting. Um, melee weapons were mentioned quite highly. Apparently, you can ban it in the chest, which is interesting. They, they talked about earlier uh, close quarters combat, and adding these melee weapons, it makes me feel like, and it seems like, they're really pushing the envelope on the close quarters combat, which makes me think that this trench warfare stuff is going to be um, a bigger part of the overall battlefield than we had originally thought. I'm not complaining about that. I am a I am a close quarters nut, so I love being up in people's faces and 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 shooting them and and, and like that's where I thrive. That I love Operation Locker for that reason is that you're always in people's faces. You're constantly um, in action 24/7, and that's great. That's awesome. However, that might make the gameplay stale if there's too much of it. So I hope that they're aware of that, and I hope that they um. Uh, you know, I think they will. I think that they'll do a good job with that. Um, vehicles, once again, I was kind of worried about the vehicles because I don't really know many much about vehicles of this time or area, but I didn't think there was a lot, but evidently there is a lot because they have, let's see what I have listed here. They talked about uh, airplanes. Apparently there's a bomber. There's a light tank. There's a heavy tank. There's a battleship. Um, there are horses for the first time that you're able, you are able to ride them and you are able to attack people with them, which is beautiful, if I might add. Um, apparently in the campaign, they wanted to push the envelope with, um, they wanted to push the campaign, they wanted to push more battlefield into the campaign. What they mean by that is they wanted to add more gameplay to it from, Battlefield giving you a unique experience because we all know let's all be honest here the battlefield Campaigns have not been the greatest the last two battlefield. I mean they were okay They weren't I'm not saying they're bad by any means But they weren't great and in my opinion bad company bad company Two have been the best campaigns out of any call of or not call of Duty. sorry battlefield game to date they have just those were amazing those were unique they made me think and it was really cool um and i'm really hoping that they do a good job with this campaign because that'll draw me in a little bit more to the game overall um they talked about destruction a lot i mean I'm excited. If they bring back destruction like up the wazoo. Now, they even talked about one point that there was too much destruction. And <laughs> me, for me, it's like uh, there was too much destruction. So was the map just like leveled? Also, it makes me think, are we going to be in cities at all? I don't know if we're actually going to get in a city or not. We might have one or two cities, but I can't think of a ton of battles that happened within cities, especially in World War One. So there is tons of destruction. Apparently, it will require unique skills to operate certain vehicles. This is an interesting concept that you might have to, you have to learn how to use each individual vehicle. Um, you've kind of had to do that in the past, but apparently there's going to be little tweaks and things like that within the game. So that'll be interesting. There is a dude with a flamethrower in the game. Don't know what that's about. Um, there was also a dude with um, a chainsaw in the... Um, or not a chains, but uh, a uh, a light machine like a like a Gatlin gun type thing, holding it and chainsawing it with complete armor. I think these are going to be like from Star Wars Battlefront pickups that you find on the battlefield. I think that's what these guys are going to be. It makes sense. I don't know how I feel about that. I might make a separate video completely talking about this. And will that mess up the balance of this game? I mean, I don't know. Um, I'll probably talk about that later on. Um, uh, yes, you can fight on horses. I've said that multiple times. Um, yes, uh, melee is going to be a key in this game. Um, oh, he mentioned gas at one point, And this is what really interested me about the gas part. Um, he said, he said, you can use, you can use the, you can use the gas mask to go through the area or not. It's up to you. Now, for me, this is what I, this almost means to me. Are, are there sections of the map 
that constantly have gas flowing through them. Are there areas that there is like gas coming out of it constantly and you need a gas mask to go through it? Or he might just be talking about if someone throws gas, you know, obviously, but he didn't make that distinction very well. And so I'm thinking he might have done that intentionally. Just a thought. I could be completely wrong on that. Um, and of course, everyone's dying to know when will it be released. Worldwide release will be October 21st, 2016. Now, if you get if you get like the pre-order it, you could get it as soon as I think they said the 18th of October. Um, so guys, that's really all there is to everything. I went through that pretty fast. Um, there's still a lot more to go. I mean, there's so much more that we want to know. We didn't really get a lot to, to figure out about um, the multiplayer. But I'll tell you what, it's going to come. E3 is coming up in less than a month, and they are definitely going to give us a lot. So I'm excited to see. Are you guys excited to see another World War um, based shooter? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If you feel like this is a great way to, uh, if you feel like this is a great thing for the Battlefield franchise or a bad, let me know what you guys think. Um, do you think there's not enough to work with? Do you feel like it's realistic enough? And I might make a video on that um, entire thing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.